It helps to be pretty thick-skinned if you're going to enter contests, but anyone who writes for more than pure personal satisfaction knows that rejection is part of the deal. Amy Cook. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots, I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. Today we are going to take a look at probably the pinnacle event of all writing contests, and that is the judging process. We want to give you an idea of what it is for the judge, so you have a better idea of what they're looking for and how to make your story stand out. Every single judge is looking for something a little bit different. Their personal experiences, their own writing styles, the things that they've judged before and really liked, really hated, everything else that you possibly cannot comprehend because of the complexity of this human being also plays a factor. So you cannot control all of that. But you can get an idea of what sort of writing they like, so you know which contests to submit to. And of course, you're not going to make a story that fits the likes and dislikes of every single judge on that panel. But you can get an idea and you can hopefully find a contest with judges that have a majority similarities with you. So if the judges are known, we encourage you to research them, research the sorts of stories that they write or read Get an idea of what they like so you know whether yours falls in line with that or not. This can also give you an idea for future contests held by the same people. If you submit once a year or whatever to this particular magazine and it's the same judge every time, it makes your life much easier for future contests, putting the work in now to understand. From the very beginning of your writing process, you already have this instinct of what's going to really rebound well from your judges. Remember that there is a lot for judges to go through when they're judging a contest. And we mean a lot, a lot. It is a lengthy process because they have to read at least a portion of every single submission. This means that judging is going to take a lot of time. If you're frustrated because you haven't heard back from this contest in a week's time, then that's actually a good thing. If they rejected you immediately and you hear back right away, that tends to be because there's something wrong with the submission itself. The word count is too high, the formatting is wrong, it's outside of the theme of the contest, these kinds of things. So you want to hear from them probably a month out. And unfortunately, in a lot of contests, if they are large, you may never hear back if you weren't one of the finalists. It's just part of the system because if there were a lot of submissions, they don't have time to reach out to every individual person that didn't make it to let them know they didn't make it. And even if they did manage to reach out, it's probably a form letter. They're not going to sit down and go, okay, this is why we didn't like your thing. That's up for you to figure out. It's not up to the judges to give you feedback on that kind of thing. That's not what they're there for. They're there to just go yay or nay, hot or not. Let's get into the judging process. Like we've mentioned a couple of times, they have a very long list of story submissions to go through unless you found a very small contest. During this first phase... The majority of what they're looking for are reasons to reject you. Again, that word count, missing any of the guidelines, that starting with the cliche that we talked about during our writing that short story. These things that automatically turn them off from your story. That's what a lot of this first phase is. After you've read a thousand, she woke up to an alarm clock. It doesn't feel like it's worth your time. You got a lot to get through. The next phase is what's called the short list. These are the top 10, 20, the handful that they liked, and if they split up the judging that they're bringing to the table for everyone to read. During this time, they are looking for what makes your writing stand out. They're looking for the hooks. They're really looking at the story progression, the development, the characters, and what it is that you are writing about. This is when they dig into that overall story, if this was a good short story or whatever format that you're writing in. 
And then that last phase they call the finalists, the people that they really like the most, the ones that more than one judge agrees this is a fantastic story, the one that fits the theme and the reason they're holding the contest in the first place. You've passed the basics. You've shown your skill as a storyteller. Now it's what is best for the purposes of this contest. Keep in mind that for larger contests especially, not all judges are going to read all submissions. A lot of the times they will be given a pool and then asked to narrow it down to their top whatever number of favorites. So say they're given 1,000 entries and they need to pick 10 from that 1,000, then all the judges get together and they all choose from that pool. So you may never even make it to a second judge if your writing gets you disqualified immediately because there isn't a good enough hook in that first paragraph, because it doesn't fit the guidelines, because it starts with a cliche or whatever the reason. If you don't make it exceptional right away, it may never even make it to additional judges. And it's really unfortunate, but luck can play a part in this particular phase. I have seen contests of all types where one person is trying to judge too much. They go, this is a yes, this is a no, 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 yes, no, 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 yes. Okay, I've got three yeses. I'm going to not bother looking at the rest. Sometimes the stack is latest first or earliest first or alphabetical. There's no way to try to play that particular part of the game. But if you're like me and you're just statistically unlucky, then this is a definite reason why something that could have been a stellar story literally just doesn't get eyes on it. Now, we want to impress upon you one very important aspect of the judging, and that is you. You need to be ready to lose. As our opening quote said, you need to have a thick skin because the odds are not in your favor to win. If you are in a place where a loss might break your soul for writing, then maybe don't submit to contests. You have to be ready to never hear back again because there were so many submissions and they can't let everybody know that they didn't get it. You may not be able to handle getting that email that says, sorry, it wasn't good enough. You, as the author, need to be prepared to be rejected a lot. This is kind of the same idea as doing the querying process, where you expect to get tens or hundreds or however many rejections before you ever actually get that one accepted yes. And in talking with a judge for the Readsy contests, stay tuned for a bonus episode, and looking online with a lot of different judges and what they're looking for, one recurring theme kept popping up, and that is the character voice. And I feel like this is something that a lot of people overlook, but this is something that can be incredibly important to how you are judged. So if you came to this episode and you're trying to figure out why the judging isn't working in your favor, this might be something to consider. Really look at the word choices, how the character is speaking, making sure that stays consistent and interesting. But more than just the word choice, it can be the point of view. Having that interesting character telling the story can help your story stand out. Making sure that that narrator voice, whether that is one of the characters or separate, is well-defined and fits well with your story. And of course, a lot of contests are to promote certain ideas, certain voices, certain cultures. So if you're entering a contest telling about streets of Detroit, whatever, having that character voice reflect whatever the contest is and aligning those two can be incredibly helpful in gaining just a little bit of favor and getting past that shortlist into the finalist category. There are a couple of things that we have mentioned throughout this month, but we want to bring up again here. When it comes to your interactions with the contest and the courtesy that you need to show the contest runners and the judges. When it comes to simultaneous submissions, 
as long as it's okay with their guidelines for the writing contest, it is absolutely okay to submit to several different contests at a single time. But as soon as you hear back from one of those contests that you have won, you need to withdraw from the others, especially if there is some kind of publication involved with that contest winner. Another just courtesy is going to come in that cover letter that you send with your short story submission. And that cover letter covers a lot of bases, but to include in there are any potential triggers that you have within your story. Your judges themselves don't always read the cover letter first. That's often the contest organizers but they can make sure that they aren't surprising and offending their judges by accidentally giving a short story about a dead dog to someone who just lost the dog. And of course, the biggest courtesy that you can offer is just to read the submission guidelines and follow the submission guidelines. It's so easy to get yourself rejected because you're trying to stand out. You're a rule breaker just by nature because you're an artist and that's what artists do. Read, follow the guidelines, they're there for a reason. All of these are to help you find the contest that is right for you, not to write the story that is right for a contest that you found. Because we still want you to focus on the story. The best stories always come when you write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 